Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And my guest today is a man who is widely viewed as one of the very best among contemporary writers here in Germany. And here he is, Ingo Schulze. Thank you very much for joining us today on Talking Germany. A great privilege. Now... As a novelist and short story writer, Ingo Schulze has won an international reputation as an author who has perhaps done more than any other to portray the huge and often painful process of change that has been taking place here in Germany since the fall of the Berlin Wall and the merging of the two Germanys, East and West. He's also an angry and committed essayist and pamphleteer who says, among other things, that democracy here in Germany is going to the dogs. Ingo Schulze, I just described you as an angry, uh, an angry author and an angry essayist. Is it true? Yes, that's that's true. But uh, normally, I am not such an angry man. <laughs> you don't seem to be such an angry fellow. But you are you are admitting to being angry. And what are you angry about? I'm glad to, to live in a democracy. Uh, I was born in Dresden in East uh, Germany, and um, uh, I grew up in, in, in the East and with, with 89, 19, it was such a relief, it was such a joy that we, that we could put away this old uh, government and, and now to, to, to reach for, for, for democracy, for freedom and so on. And now I, ha I, I have the fear that uh, we, we lose a lot of the things that, uh, that, our, that, that people... Uh, 20, 30, 100 years fight for, for this and, and we, we, we should take it in our hands and, and to, to, to build more democracy. And, and I have the, the, the fear that over the economy, uh, that democracy, we, we, we lose more and more our democracy. Mm. You mentioned growing up in East Germany there. I'd like to ask you, have you ever met Angela Merkel, another East German? No, I, I was uh, never invited to Angela Merkel. <laughs> no, no. I, I never refused when, when I get the invitation from politicians. I, I said I accept it always and, and oh. go there because I'm very interested in, but I, I never got the invitation from her. Okay, one of the, re the, the reason why I'm asking is because what, what I've, been, I've been reading some of your recent stuff and I have, a fe I have the feeling that you are actually very angry with Angela Merkel. If she were here now, what would you say to her? Oh, I want to discuss with, with her, her, her um, slogan that, that she said uh, we, we need a um, marked conforming de uh, de democracy. That's so, a difficult... So, yeah. so, so that, that, that uh, the democracy go, goes on line of, of the market. Yeah. And uh, that we... Um, and I think that that's, uh, that's a kind of sin because we, we have to think how to make uh, uh, the, 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 the markets uh, more in, in line of democracy. Mm. I hope you can understand, Mama. I have to. I don't know. It's a, it's a tough thing because she said, she actually said in German she said that uh, that she said uh, dem democracy, democracy in German should be marked conform. It should yes. be. It should be. Uh, it's difficult to explain, isn't it? It should be. Democracy should adapt itself to the financial markets. Yeah, the, the, the democracy uh, had to see how, how to handle uh, with the market and it, it means how to react, how, how can we be faster in our, our decisions, how can we react better in, 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 in terms of the, of the market. And, and I think uh, we, we have to say we, we have a democracy and, and there, uh, we, we need the market, but, but we have to say what, what, what is it, the, the market, and we have uh, to, to, to find the rules for it and, and to say what we want and, and maybe we have to, to say we are not, uh, we, we don't allow um, to make this or this uh, why we need uh, hedge funds for, for example or, or other things. Okay, we'll be talking about all these subjects in detail very shortly. You've had your first impressions there from the sometimes angry Ingo Schulze. Here's more. <laughs> 49-year-old Ingo Schulze is an author and the father of two daughters. He's one of the most prominent German authors of his generation. His works focus on the fall of communism, German unification, and the following years. Many of his ten novels and essays have been translated into other languages. 
I write about the events I experienced, and 1989 and 1990 play a major role. I was born in Dresden in 1962 and grew up there. After I left the city at the age of 18, I did 18 months military service. Then I was at university in Jena for five years before moving to Altenburg to work in theatre. This is Altenburg, and this is the theatre I came to in 1988 after university. I dreamt of joining a theatre. Altenburg was a small town, relatively lively, with over 50,000 inhabitants and fairly close to Leipzig. After the fall of the wall, theatre suddenly seemed boring. Everything else was far more interesting. So I founded a newspaper with friends. At the end of 1992, a businessman sent me to St. Petersburg to create the first free paper there. That's when I started writing. This is the library, the nicest place in the whole apartment. Here are a couple of books I wrote. 33 Moments of Happiness was my first book. It's set in St. Petersburg in the early 1990s. Three years later came Simple Stories, a novel from provincial eastern Germany. It's set in Altenburg. Harry Nelson came to Altenburg from Frankfurt in May 1990, one week after my 19th birthday. He was looking for houses, mainly construction sites where he could build gas stations. My first two books essentially begin after the fall of the war. It was a new era. I like taking bits of the wall along on my travels. I can say, if I didn't have this in my hand, I wouldn't be standing here now. And today he's our guest on Talking Germany. A warm welcome, Ingo Schulze. Ingo Schulze, you were born in Dresden. Let's go back to those early, to those formative years. And you, you said somewhere that when you, were, when you were a youngster, you were naive. Yes, of course. What did you mean? <laughs> um, well, when I was 13, 14, I, I, I thought um, I have to become a writer because I, I want to avoid the, the, the army. I, I, I don't know why. Early in the kindergarten, the, the uh, East German, the army. East German army, army. Mm. maybe not only the East German <laughs> army, but, but yes. our army in general. But I, I don't know why, but, but army was all the things I, I don't want. And, uh, and and interesting for me is that I had an idea to become a writer, uh, then I can go through um, because writer in in East Germany were heroes. There were dissidents. There were no, nobody was uh, as important as a writer. And uh, but I failed. Uh, I had to go to the to the army. Mm -hmm. But but writing became um, a thing very familiar to me. But <laughs> but I, I need a long time that I could write things. I was convinced that I can send it to the publishing. House. Okay, okay. I mean, it's funny that you said you were dreaming of becoming a writer and becoming a heroic writer because I, you didn't actually start reading until you were aged yes. thirteen. That's yes. very late for a would-be writer. Oh yes, but, but the, the, how to say that the converts are always the, uh, the, the oh the late converts. The late converts, yeah. thank you. Uh, <laughs> the late converts are uh, the most terrible uh, people. Um, yes, writing was too too boring for me. It took me too much time to to add one word to, to another. But then, <laughs> then I uh, find out when I uh, start reading that um, my life is. is it's, it's not boring. It's, uh, and now I, I have, I have the, the whole world in my in my room, and that was I was twelve or thirteen, I, and that was um, it was like um, uh, that that that, uh, that I, I understand the world is not flat, but it's it's, it's uh, round. Boring. It was a revolution inside oh, your it, head. Yes. Wow. 
so you did become a writer. You really only became a writer, a published writer, after the collapse of communism. Yeah? And uh, y your breakthrough novel was Simple Stories, which I, which I thought was wonderful, which I liked, and was a big international success. It's, it's a story about people whose lives are, uh, are blown apart mm -hmm. by the collapse of communism. Yeah? Why, why, why did you, you know, what was important to you about writing it at that time? I want to describe East Germany after after 89 because it was a very new experience not only for me for the society and I think also for for the for the world you, you can say because coming from from a kind of socialist system and, and going to a kind of capitalist um, world in, in this way uh, it, it was it was really uh, new and um, the, the main question for me is always with which style, with which sound mm. I can describe. And if you have the right sound, the things come to you, and otherwise they, they go, they go away. And uh, for a long time, uh, I had a feeling I, I can't write about Germany. My first book was about Russia, and and that it. I succeeded more or less, but for, for Germany I had no voice. And, and then came with, with this traditional short story like coming from Hemingway, Raymond Carver, Richard, uh, Richard uh, Ford. And uh, I, I was wondering how, how I can describe this situation with this um, style. And one explanation could be that we come from one day another, for, from one day to another, in, in a total different system. From one moment to another, money was the thing you can compare with everything. It's interesting that, you, I mean, what you're talking about, the, these, these are a very s serious and very painful episode in people's lives. But you used, in, in, in essence, it's a burlesque, it's a comedy. Why okay. did you choose comedy? I think it, um, I, I would not say it's only comedy, because uh, if, if you try to, to, to look closer to, to something, then it's uh, comedy, but it's also tragedy. And, and you, you, it, it's, it's always uh, connected. And I, I, um, I'm not interested to, to write a tra tra tragical <laughs> verb or a comical <laughs> word. It, it's always uh, it's together. And that's also my, my daily life. So sometimes you are really sad and <laughs> have to, to start laughing a bit because it, it's so comical. And sometimes you are laughing and saying, oh my God, what, what mm -hmm. happens with us? With, with mm -hmm. But it, it certainly is. A, it, all, the stories are about people who are, in essence, people who are uprooted, people who are dislocated in their everyday lives. 20 years later, what happened to all those people? Oh, I, I, I try to write, to write about um, this. You, you, you can't say in, in, in general it happens did this or, or that. For, in, 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 the, in the early 90s, it was interesting that uh, we were all like children. We, 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 we learned 20 years, 30 years, 60 years how, how to, to behave, how, how to handle. And then it was totally new new game. And uh, if you... Um, had a uh, own house and you you sold it one year ago for nearly nothing and bought a second hand card it was equal if you have this house not sold and you have it now you are rich and could buy every new card do, do you want so so it, everything changed also your, um, your well, what was your study what was your ed education it could be brilliant for the new job and, and you, you could have a wonderful job before and from one day to, in, to another and nobody needs you mm. so everything uh, upside down mm. and uh, now it's more um, how to say more more smooth but in in these little cities in, in east germany most of the young people went away also now did they are did they go away and uh, the, the, the cities look wonderful but uh, it's hard to find people there mm. OK, we're talking about uh, what happened after the fall of communism. And one of the things that happened were th there was a lot of challenges. And one of those was uh, what to do with all the formerly state-owned companies in East Germany. And the answer was uh, that they were turned over to what was called the Treuhandanstalt, what people just called the Treuhand. It was a, a giant government trust agency that was effectively tasked with selling off or closing down these companies. And as a result, some two and a half million people, two and a half million people lost their jobs. We have this report. East German propaganda made its national economy out to be one of the most successful in the world. In 1989, the world found out the truth behind the myth. 
Many of its 12,000 enterprises were crumbling and hopelessly obsolete. A government trust agency called Treuhand was formed to oversee the transition to a market economy. I worked in East German industry and I knew it couldn't be competitive. We just couldn't produce the kind of quality needed to compete internationally. Initially, the agency was responsible for some four million workers, making it the largest setup of its kind worldwide. Its task was to overhaul East German companies and make them suitable for a market economy. Privatization is the best way to overhaul an operation and the best chance they've got. Economic conditions were not favorable. The weak East German mark was exchanged for West German Deutschmarks one-to-one. At first, it looked like a good deal for East Germans, but it struck a near-fatal blow to their economy. Suddenly, all wages and expenses had to be paid in Deutschmarks. As soon as companies became unprofitable, they were impossible to sell. And if they couldn't be sold, that meant they were a debt liability for the owner. And after October the 3rd, 1990, that owner was the German federal government. Within a few months, the eastern German economy was collapsing and unemployment soaring. The trust agency served as the scapegoat. Whenever jobs disappeared or enterprises closed down, the Treuhand was always to blame. There was no real alternative to all this, but the political impact still had to be softened and the damage controlled. And to a large extent, it was up to the Treuhand to achieve that. The agency was dissolved by its president, Birgit Boyle, in 1994. Very few of the former East German companies had survived the unification process. I think the most important line in that report was the line, there was no alternative. <laughs> yeah, we agree, yeah? <laughs> uh, was there an alternative? No, uh, there, there, there was an alternative, uh, but it, it's, it's hard to describe exactly how it has uh, to look. Um, if you speak about Treuhand and all, all this change, you have to, to go one step more back mm -hmm. and, and to, to ask uh, what happens uh, when, when the day mark because uh, um, the problem was from one day to another to, to, to pay the people. Uh, you, you paid with GDR mark in June and to pay them in, in Denmark in, in July, it's it's not possible. I think uh, nowhere in, in the world it, it should... Uh, Let's just explain. The, the, the West German, the D-mark, the Deutschmark was introduced overnight as an exchange rate of one for one. One for one. And that was very problematic. Yes, and, and uh, it, 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 at first it sounds good to, to get your, your salary, your wage in, in, in Denmark, but uh, everybody could uh, know my, my, my factory, my, my whatever, is, is not able to, to do this more than one or two, two months. And so in, in the moment when uh, uh, all the, the um, economy was should, or should be privatized, uh, they, 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 they were useless because mm -hmm. they, 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 they break uh, down and uh, I, I would uh, suggest to, to take more time. It's more complicated for the East and for the West. So it was a very easy decision where Ben Trouble said uh, uh, we, we will welfare for, for everybody and you see our Wirtschaftswunder in, in the West. The uh, economic the, miracle. Yeah, economic mm -hmm. miracle. <laughs> and it will also happen in, in the East, trust me, and it, it uh, will, will start very soon. And uh, after two or three years, uh, you, you realize that's, uh, that it's not true. You, you could know it before. It can't be uh, true. But then it was too late. It was 70, 80 percent of the East German uh, in industry where, where went uh, away. It was good for the countryside, but uh, not not for the not uh, always uh, for the people. And so I think that one, one problem is to, to privatize everything. Mm -hmm. And the second was the, the, the time, how fast it, it has uh, to be. And um, I think today uh, this. Um, uh, how to say this? This truisms, or uh, did this thing? This uh, you, you never think in the daily life about it. That they started in eighty nine ninety. Privatization is the best thing, and we have all to do that. Uh, it, there is economic growth, mm -hmm. and, and now we are in this orbit in in, in this uh, atmosphere, and we, we can't think in another way. Mm. Um, let's be honest. East Germany was not very good at making things. 
It wasn't very good. I mean, the, the, the goods that were, that were produced in East Germany were never going to be competitive on international markets. Most of this uh, seems a fraud. And, and the explanation is that there was, um, I would not say it was a dictatorship. I, I don't know to say in English, an, an vormundschaftlicher Staat. It's a, a, a it, was a, it, was a, it was a state that talked down to its people. Yes, so, so and, and it also to the economic people, and, and they were taught you have to do this and this, and then there, 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 there can't be really uh, wonderful things. But for instance, they, they made a uh, uh, fridge uh, to, to deliver with green peas, and it was the first fridge uh, without this uh, blowing in the atmosphere. Okay. Um, but of so course, you, the, the, uh, East on, Germany on, produced the first environmentally friendly fridge yeah, in yes, the world. Yes, to deliver with green peas, that's true. Okay. But, but uh, also, <laughs> this had to, to, to die. Um, but uh, of course, there was a big export to, 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 the, to the east. Yeah. And um, so, of course, you, you, you can't uh, that I want competition with, with the West. You, you had uh, all these this dumping prices, but it, it's still today. It, it's also the dumping price from, from India, from, from, from okay, China. But, but you, you're talking about how, uh, you know, about how East German industry collapsed, how about a lot of people moved away from East German towns and cities and went to the West. Some of them are coming back. When I travel around East Germany now, Eastern Germany, when I go to places like Leipzig or Weimar or Potsdam or the city where you grew up, Dresden, mm -hmm. I see people who are proud of their cities mm -hmm. and who are proud of what they have achieved in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. I think when you go to Leipzig, to Dresden, to, to, to Jena, uh, you, you, you've got this, this impression, but uh, you go to, to cities like, like Altenburg and, 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 and cities with, they had in former times 50 something thousand, they have now 30 something thousand. There is no, no industry anymore. And uh, for, for them, they have no, no choice. They had to go uh, away. You can say yeah, the wonderful houses, good uh, streets, but uh, but now the, the step between east and, and, and west is uh, it, it not uh, coming closer. It's going wider, or it's in the same uh, stashes. <laughs> Yeah, there are, there are great differences between East and West Germany, without a doubt, and a lot of them so, uh, 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 have to do with economic wealth. But the, uh, the, the current unemployment rate in West Germany is something like 6%. I'm not exactly sure. In, in, in East Germany, it's somewhere around 10%, which is high. But, you know, a, Sp a Spaniard yeah, yeah, or yeah. somebody in Greece would say, Poof, I'll take it. Yes, of course. <laughs> but but uh, for, for me, um, and it was also in 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 the nineties. It's it, it's it's a problem of east and west. But but uh, that that's beneath the the problem uh, uh, um, down and and high. Mm -hmm. who, 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 so it's who, all relative. Who, who, who takes the profit mm -hmm. from, from from this uh, thing? The the try hand Dave. Uh, um, Factories to, 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 to people that they, they paid one uh, a day mark and, and promised this this and that and then they they sold only the um, property for mm -hmm. I don't know some, some the millions plant. Yeah. And, and, and 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 become rich and and uh, there happens so, so such such a lot of, of bad uh, things uh, you, you have to tell the, the, the stories for instance my, my mother she, she worked in, in a um, hospital she was uh, the, 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 the first under the chief and 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 then she she decided uh, I, I don't want to to be night by night and in the hospital I, I made a, a laboratory and and she she needed uh, a uh, 20,000 Daymar and, and she was 50 something and she was not, uh, no, no bank would want to give her this money. So then came friends from the West and said, oh, we will give you this 20 and then they, they, they could start and, and become, in, in, in terms of my world view, mm -hmm. they, they be, she, she became rich. Uh, mm -hmm. But, but uh, without this help from the friends, there, there was nothing possible. And, and so you, you could speak about a lot of these things. Okay, okay. I, th I think one thing that is perfectly clear is that is that one thing that drives Ingo Schulze mad is the growing commercialization and privatization of all sorts of areas of public life. There are many, of course, who say it's the only alternative at a time when public coffers are often empty. Well, in our next report, the question is, do we want advertising in our schools? Crisis meetings have become commonplace in German schools as essential teaching materials become difficult to come by. The teachers used to weigh quality against cost, but now they have little choice in the matter. 
They have no budget for quality. More and more teachers are taking advantage of teaching material provided by corporate sources. The brochures are colorful, glossy, and free of charge. This is a win-win situation for businesses. They give the teachers something they can use, as studies have shown, and the companies profit from making their names familiar among the pupils. That can be a big help later on. Josef Kraus, president of the German Teachers' Federation, has his doubts. He's concerned about the trend. What I don't like is that you keep finding instances where what's explained and provided for the schools isn't always completely objective. Much of this material is rather dubious. A chewing gum manufacturer, for example, claims that its own science institute has discovered that chewing gum stimulates brain activity. And mineral water bottlers urge pupils to drink more during class. Dieter Pleve of Lobby Control is even more worried about the increasing tendency for industry associations to try to influence classroom discussions in their favor. The euphemism for it is social consulting, but in fact it amounts to lobbying in the classroom. The old schools were more closed to interest groups of every kind. But now schools struggling with local and state budget cuts tend to open up to the corporations and industry associations, which then seek greater access and get it much more easily. Critics like Josef Krauss denounce the ever-growing influence lobbying organizations like the New Social Market Economy Initiative or the Bertelsmann Foundation have on education policy. Parliament has accredited far more than 2,000 interest groups, for hearings, for instance. And I guess that more than half of them have some kind of pseudo-educational materials to offer. One particularly obscure example of what's on offer, a brochure on social justice in the context of economic crisis. The aim is to teach pupils that a downward distribution of wealth exists. Studies show that dubious pamphlets like this one are accepted by pupils without criticism, making propaganda a worthwhile objective. Propaganda. That was the word we just heard at the end of the report. I think propaganda is being used for advertising. Mm -hmm, yeah? mm -hmm. Advertising in German schools? I mean, we both have school-aged children. Mm -hmm. Have you come across advertising? In uh, till yet, I, I have... Um, by my two daughters, till yet, I, I haven't uh, seen it. But I, I know how the, 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 the shape of, of the stool, uh, the, 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 the rooms are not true, and, and as... Um, uh, as parents, you are forced to 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 go to school to 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 work there or to 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 give uh, toys as, as a gift and and so on and um, and but the most problem is that we had not not in, enough teachers. So okay, so we don't have enough teachers. The schools are under resourced. The schools are uh, you you're explaining that infrastructurally not not in very good shape. If, yeah. If, if you go to a very good area in Berlin, uh, Prenzlauer Berg, and 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 you see a uh, if you find one of the old houses, they are not restored, not renovated. Uh, I think uh, in, in 80, 90 percent of, of them, they are owned by the city or the, the state. Or so there are schools, there are kindergartens, and, and, and so on. Why would a, why can this be happening? I mean, Germany is essentially a, a rich country in international comparison. Why? Wh it's madness. Why are we not investing more in our schools? That's exactly my question. <laughs> so why is it, it, it's so absurd? You you can't give uh, explanation, but when it has uh, uh, to to do how to handle, how to deal with the, with the mm. money, and uh, and and I, I love to pay taxes, but then I, I you love to pay taxes. Yes, yes I I, uh, I I love to pay taxes, but when I know my, my children, I have not seen in which school I have to to send my my children. Of course, if they are special gifted in this or this way, that's another thing, but. Um, this this tool is not good in in terms of social things and this I, I, I live in a democracy and I think in in, in education also also in medical health uh, care that, 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 that it should not depend on on the money uh, the, the parents or I I have and uh, that, that we have to 
to defend or also to, to, to reach new and new things. I would like to put a thesis to you and ask you to react to the thesis. The thesis is this, the private sector is efficient, the private sector gets things right. The public sector muddles up, doubles up, there's bureaucracy, it's inefficient. It gets things wrong. That's a half true. So be true. Of, of course, you will, will find the things. But uh, sometimes I have the, the feeling that uh, we, we work all more than 10, 20 years ago. And, but but the, the society as, as, as a whole is uh, inefficient. Mm. Um, to, uh, for, I, I think it will, uh, it, it's true to have a private uh, bakery, a private cafe, a private factory. So, so, but uh, to, to have, uh, for instance, the insurance private, I don't believe in private in insurance because as a private insurance, you have to make profit. And, and uh, why, why should... Uh, Are you talking um, about health insurance here or in general insurance? General, general insurance, general, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, or maybe for for energy system, I think to, to, to have it in one one hand, it, it could be much much better. And and you you could go transportation system, our our train, uh, the, the the so called city, bahn the S bahn in mm -hmm. Berlin collapsed because uh, it was owned by by the by the train company by the Deutsche Bahn, the national they, railway. Yes, yeah. and mm -hmm. they, they 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 should go to to the stock exchange and, and so, so they, 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 they handle the things so, so bad. And so there was an IPO and they weren't investing in the local, in the Berlin railway network, the inner city yes, railway so. network. And, and, and I think you have to, 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 to ask you, you can say in general that privatization is, is good or, or bad, but I think you, you have to, to always to see is it good to, to make a privatization here or is it not good? And I, I don't want to have a private police and I don't want to have uh, 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 that, that a private stool, it, it, it's better than than, um, than, than a city stool or a state uh, stool. Mm -hmm. Je, um, it's interesting when I, when I read your, your latest book and when I listen to what you're saying now, one of the things you're really focusing on is that the fact that there, there is a growing gap between rich and poor here in Germany and in many other parts of Europe as well. Uh, how much has the good old-fashioned notion of class got to do with this? Uh, it's not in this traditional uh, way that you, that you say that... The, the hand worker or other the poor people and and if you have education then then you you then you become uh, rich but uh, i think this this gap is is a problem for you you can find that the, the people with uh, that they they don't know how to pay for for the rent how to pay for the pension uh, um so or for for what the children want you you find it in in, in every every place of the uh, society and uh, this this gap uh, i i realized bit between the end of the 90s and middle of then 2005 2006 and the the real disaster uh, for for germany was that it, it came with a red green government you use it it came with these people so this you, was the you, government you, of gerhard schroeder yes yeah. you, you thought this this government will protect especially the people there are not so because so they rich. were social democrats and greens you thought yes. they would stand up for the people yes and they that, didn't i i vote them I, i i'm guilty also for this because i i, I vote them and i was it was such a joy i was so glad that they came to um, to power And in, in, in the end, you say, oh, good, well, what, what have they uh, done? It's such a polarization of, of the um, society. It, it's uh, so, so that T Tony Blair continued that, I, I think. And, mm. and, and what comes with, with uh, Raiden, also what, was what Bill Clinton did, it, it was in this line. For me, Berlin is grey and green. Ah, uh, for me, it's green and grey. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. And what's the what are the connotations? Why green and grey for you? Um, it, it depends on on the time of the year, but I think mm. Berlin is extremely green. You find a lot of parks and. Uh, mm -hmm. So you a lot of trees in in, in the in the streets. A lot so. of lakes. 
Yeah. A lot of late. When I when I when I went out of Berlin in April and come back in in May, it's a, <laughs> it's a green city. Okay, that's that's the same reason for me as the green and the grey is, is winter time in the in the in the city. Um, sometimes. Myself. Are you a flaneur? <laughs> we talk. I use this word flaneur that people like to in German use. It's a French word, but people, you know, you you wander around the city, sort of I, I thinking wish, your thoughts. I, I wish to be a flaneur, but ah. um, I, I love to 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 stroll through the city and, and to walk there but but mostly I have now no time then I go by car or by, by, by metro I see. so and uh, but uh, I, I, I love to, to discover Berlin be, to, to to behave in your own city but do you see oh you are in a strange city you are not familiar you was never on this place mm. so that's that's a lot of possibilities in berlin to to feel like a stranger mm. and it's interesting because you were for there's, a, there's another word that's used in german this this notion of the stadtschreiber mm. a sort of town chronicler and you were a stadtschreiber a town chronicler in uh, in mainz, in mainz yes. that's a long way from home for you that's a long way from home and i, I was there only for some some weeks uh, because the, it, it's like like a award to, to be the Stadtschreiber and in Mainz is, is a second German TV and, and, and Arte and, and other TV, uh, German TV stations and so your um, your task was or your your, your business was to, to make a, a documentary, a, a movie. Oh, I see. Uh, so you're a filmmaker too? Yes, I, I, uh, we, we did last year one documentary. Mm -hmm. And how do you become a Stadtschreiber? How, how, why, why did they choose you? Uh, oh, you have to, 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 to ask them. Um, may, maybe they, they liked what, what I uh, wrote and maybe they, they, they asked me, if, would you accept when, when we uh, give you this um, award and uh, do you have an idea for, for a movie? And uh, I, I, I loved to, to do this movie. It was a totally different uh, experience also to work with, with a TV uh, station. Um, but in, in the end, I, I was glad that I got the, the chance to do this. Okay. Um, we've been talking about Germany, about how you see Germany. Yeah? I'd like to ask you, and, and you've, been, you've been suggesting that Germany is, is, is uh, that democracy is even a threat in Germany. I'd like to ask you, where would you like to see Germany in 20 years' time? Hmm. Uh, that, I, that I'm not afraid uh, that I walk to the city and I have to, to give people money because they have no other choice to, to, to get the money and... Um, they're very, very open, very green, uh, <laughs> but um, it, it's hard to, to speak only about one one country because you, you know it, everything. It's it's so connected. Uh, you you can't speak only about Germany. You have to speak about Europe, and, and of course you have to speak about the world because our daily life it's uh, it's it's not it's not bad. But w what are the results of our daily life on, on other uh, places of the world? And and so I, I hope we, we we take care about this connection. Okay, that's all we've got time for today. You've to, you, your vision for the future was so long that uh, we haven't got time for our quiz at the end of the show. I know you're not sad about that, yeah? Uh, that's our lot with the committed and the compelling Ingo Schulze. Uh, you'll find more on my blog on the Talking Germany website. And if you've enjoyed the show as much as I have, then do come back next week. Until then, bye-bye uh, and tschüss. <laughs>